Hey guys, it's been a while, so I want to talk about something that will shock you into sobriety. So if you're having trouble relapsing, you never seem to quit alcohol for any length of time, I want you to do this experiment. Now, it's going to blow your mind and it's going to be rough, okay? This is going to be something that will bring up a lot of emotions, but that's what you need to do to really face your um, alcoholism and to do something about it because most alcoholics they don't want to face pain they don't want to face any more pain that's why they pretty much started drinking i mean i started drinking um, because it felt amazing and because i was uh, brought up under a very strict household so when i first tried alcohol when i was 17 that buzz was like magic okay but then it turned against me and the next two decades uh, nearly killed me and destroyed my life. So there's a step in AA, it's the fourth step. And I'm gonna read this to you, so just, just listen to this. Number four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So I had to do this years ago. And basically my sponsor was like, I want you to write down everything bad that has happened to you because of alcohol everything literally you got to do you have to write an autobiography okay and i i suggest that you do at least three to five pages on a notebook okay and it might take a while to get get it going um but pretty soon it should flow and even if it doesn't, it's okay. I'm not, we're no, no one's judging you. Okay. This is all for you. This is all for your sanity and your sobriety. But when you do this, I, I suggest you do it tonight. Okay. It's Friday night here. Uh, when you're watching this, it could be any day of the week, but ideally you do this before you go out and drink on the weekend. Or if you're a drinker every day, do it before you drink. But what I want you to do is write down kind of like an autobiography of your life on alcohol. And you have to think of everything that you've done. This is really something that is going to take balls. You're going to have to have courage. Okay. If you're a real man or woman, you got to step up to the plate and, and write down everything that you've done on alcohol, not what other people have done. Okay. That's what a lot of alcoholics do is they project everything out onto other people. Well, it's their fault. They did it to me. But actually, if you want to recover and stay sober, you have to take a thousand percent accountability. And I know it's really hard. It's really hard for your ego to adjust to this. But this is where the true you will come out. And the true you is beautiful. Okay, you're full of love, you're full of light, you have gifts, and you can change the world, honestly, okay? I've been sober for 10 years, amazing. My life is amazing. I don't get in trouble with the police anymore. I don't fight with my girlfriend anymore. The quality of my girlfriend has skyrocketed, okay? When I was a drunk, I, I attracted drunk people or people that partied, and there's a lot of drama in partying, there's a lot of violence, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of cheating, there's everything. All the demoralizing things are wrapped up in an alcoholic life. Uh, families get destroyed every single day from someone who's alcoholic. If you ever watch Intervention, the whole family is distraught and they're crying and they're like, please come back to us. It tears families apart. Okay, so if you want to get sober, you have to point the finger back at yourself and start writing in that freaking notebook everything that you've done from the smallest thing when you started drinking. It could have been like, um, you know, punching a hole in the wall or doing graffiti or cheating, cheating on your girlfriend or your boyfriend, hurting your, your parents, driving drunk, uh, Minor in possession. I got two minor in possessions in, in uh, two minor in possessions in one week. Um, I hurt myself. I still have scars. This scar right here, that's from wrecking on a bicycle. Okay, I I just face planted on the asphalt. Uh, even this, this could be something from uh, the bike rack or something else. I hit my head so many times. 
um, you know, we're wearing the scars of our drinking. It's, it's not romantic. It's not cool anymore. Okay, so when you write down everything um, in chronological order or, or when it comes up, you know, just, just write it out. Just free flow. Just let it all out. Okay. And what you can do if you feel like drinking in the future, bring it out. Bring out the notebook that you wrote, all that, all that puke in, all that venom, all that demoralizing darkness. Bring that notebook out and read it before you drink, okay? And it will constantly remind you of where alcohol actually leads you. Because as alcoholics, we really forget how fast, we forget fast, uh, you know, what the bad stuff is. When If we want to go out and drink, we forget the bad stuff to rationalize drinking again. Oh, that was a long time ago, or it's going to be different tonight. That's the biggest lie. Or just one more time. I'm going to drink just one more time. Or it's going to be different tonight. Or I'm going to stop at six. I, I've, I've lied to myself thousands of times. It never worked out. I always blacked out. Always something bad happened. And if you want to be sober forever, you have to do this. Now let me just go over the first four steps real quick uh, in short order. So the first step is we admitted we were powerless over alcohol. That right there is very liberating. When you can say I'm powerless over alcohol, that's where a true healing begins. If you're still like, oh, I can handle it, then I'm sorry, this this channel isn't for you. You're not ready. You gotta go back out and 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 war some more. You gotta go back out and war some more and 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 destroy yourself a little bit more. You know, in my twenties I, I I brushed off a lot of stuff. That was ridiculous and it was hurting me so bad. And I was like, ah, oh, no problem. That's, you know, I, oh, a heart attack? No problem. That was just a fluke. Oh, yeah, I, I did this? Not a problem, you know, but it's, it's, it's a waste. It's a waste of life and it doesn't get better. Now, if you, if you can moderate, this channel isn't for you either. Okay. Some people leave a comment and they're like, Oh yeah, you know, it's it's not a disease, it's not progressive. I, you know, I I I'm a been drinking for you know, and it's fine. It's like, well then, why are you watching my video? If it's fine, why are you looking up sobriety videos? I mean, you obviously are crying for help and you're curious what sobriety is like. This is for people that don't know what they're what they don't know what to do. They're they're at their at their wits end and they're they're afraid for their life and they they can't stop a lot of people can't stop and this is this is the beginning of the end of the demon alcohol is to admit that you're powerless over alcohol number two you came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity it doesn't have to be god this isn't church god could be anything higher power it could be nature it could be the universe it could be a force outside of yourself, a benevolent force. You just have to get outside of yourself because right now your will is what's digging your grave. Okay. You're the one in control with the, of the keys to your life. You have to turn the keys in and let, let God. Okay. Number three, you made a decision to turn our will and lives over to the care of God as we understood him you know, or she or whatever. Okay. So you, you turn the car keys in, you turn it over to God. Number four is the searching moral inventory. Okay. And number five is you admitted to God, to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. This is where I took my three to five pages of vomit, all the horrible things I did, took it over to my sponsor's house. I read it all to him. And I thought he was going to be shocked. And I thought he was going to be like, wow. And, and I wanted him to be shocked. I, my ego wanted him to be shocked. I wanted to impress him with all the horrible things I did. I'm such a rebel. I'm such a dark uh, person. But he didn't. He was just like, okay, now burn it up. And I crumpled it up and I... I lit it on fire and threw it in the fire pit. And that was it. 
and it felt so freeing. All that vomit gone, all that venom gone. It was very liberating, especially reading it to someone. Now, don't read it to friends that still drink or anyone like that. You have to get a, a if you want to do this right, you know, the uh, you can do this, the moral inventory on your own. I'm just saying, if you do get a sponsor, get one from AA and um, do it right. But that's it. I mean, the steps are amazing. They've worked for 50, 70 years. However, I mean, AA has been around since I think 1933. Correct me if I'm wrong. The steps do work. Um, and I, I stopped going to AA because I I burned the bridge. I, I knew I was never going to drink again. And sometimes, you know, AA can keep you in the problem because you always have to talk about alcohol. Um, but it can be very, very healing for people that are brand new to recovery. And if you're really white knuckling it right now and having withdrawals and, and you're scared or you're angry, you should go to night, at least go to 90 meetings in 90 days. You got to do a blitzkrieg marathon and just sit in the back of the room and listen, put your hand, sit on your hands and shut up and listen. Okay. This is not your time to talk or, you know, be an egomaniac. This is where you humble yourself and just listen. Because you turned your, your keys in. You turned your will over to the care of God. And there's angels in that room. And they love you and they care about you. And someone's there to guide you. It could be a guardian angel. We all have, we all have one. A guardian angel. I know it might sound phony, but I've, I've witnessed angels before. And uh, it's it's real. It, we are in a spiritual battle. Every time you drink, the demons are like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's getting more evil and more wicked out there. So stay home and stay safe. I love you guys. Leave a comment. Like this video. And uh, check out my links under my video for uh, business services and uh, prescriptions and other cool things like that. And we'll talk to you soon. God bless.